I've argued before that even though the right accuses the left of having the problem of language policing, that actually language policing is just as big of a problem on the right, if not bigger in the United States. I've argued before that even though the right accuses the left of having the problem of overbearing political correctness, that it's actually just as big of a problem on the right, if not bigger. They just call it something else on the right. And maybe most importantly, even though everybody argues every side of the issue of political violence, we've heard people take every position on this issue. The data clearly demonstrate that in the United States, the majority of politically inspired violence and domestic terrorism is done by individuals that would be on the right of the political spectrum. And one example exploded this weekend when right wing extremist Gavin McInnes gave a speech in New York City to members of his group. It's a far right group that is called the Proud Boys, which discourages its members from masturbating or watching porn so as to motivate them to, quote, get off the couch and meet women. This is part of what Proud Boys does. The Southern Poverty Law Center has said that um, the Proud Boys requires recruits get into a physical fight with an Antifa activist at a public rally, sort of like as an initiation. Uh, it's sort of like an alt right fight club. Isn't that kind of what yeah. you would? That's what it strikes you me. Make as. a movie about it. Well, that, that would be quite a perverse movie. I can assure you it should be a documentary. Yeah. Uh, so we have a bunch of different videos that have surfaced from this weekend where apparently the Proud Boys came out on such a high from Gavin McInnes's speech. And we're showing this video to our audience. They came out on on such a high from his speech at the Metropolitan Republican Club that they started kicking and punching people all over New York City. The video is total chaos. It's not clear who's doing what. Police are now trying to piece it together. There are claims that they're clashing with left wing Antifa protesters who were there in opposition to Gavin McInnes's speech. Uh, I, I guess this is what happens when you combine anti masturbation ideas with Republican incels, incels, of course, being men who are involuntarily celibate. We've talked about this. They don't want to be celibate, but they seem unable to stop being celibate. If, if that sort of makes sense. Here's another video where you'll hear the word faggot used liberally as they beat someone. This is New York City. OK, take a look at this. Oh my God. This is literally a white supremacist mob, go, mob going around Manhattan, beating people up. Fox News, of course, blamed Antifa for the entire thing. Here's how, how Fox News reported this thing. The far left group Antifa strikes again, this time at a Republican office in Manhattan. And the group <laughs> says it's just the beginning. Trace Gallagher is tracking that for us tonight. Trace. Shannon, it was around 1.30 in the morning when the anti-fascist or Antifa members allegedly vandalized the New York Republican headquarters in New York City. <laughs> Windows were broken, doors spray painted, glue put in locks and handles. And a threatening note was also left behind saying, quote, tonight we put the Republican Party on notice in defiance to the policy of mass misery they have championed. The U.S. government has established concentration camps around the country for Latino people, shamelessly murders black people, and continues its war machine that has slaughtered Muslim people with impunity for decades. The note goes on to say their attack is just beginning, and it talks about Republicans inviting a, quote, hipster fascist clown to dance for them. A reference to the GOP hosting Gavin McInnes, the founder of a far right organization called Proud Boys, who have <laughs> physically clashed with Antifa protesters on several occasions. Today, New York Republican Chairman Ed Cox called on Democrats to cease inciting these attacks. So he, Trace Gallagher is talking about Gavin McInnes at the time that they show Gavin McInnes on screen. but. He's the guy who is wielding a sword. He's brandishing a sword in the video. And the headline and the story is all about how Antifa is bad. 
Technically, Trace Gallagher did say Gavin McInnes's name when the video shows him brandishing the sword. But the entire story is about its Antifa violence. So understand what Fox did. They show video of the right wing leader of the right wing group brandishing a huge sword. But they report that Antifa was the problem at this entire event. Yeah, and typically Fox News will cover an act of violence committed by Antifa, but ignore those committed by the right. Yeah. This is a situation where you don't know, you don't completely know who started it, but every indication points to the Proud Boys being the perpetrators. Yes. And they just completely flip the script. It's, it's worse. It's a lot worse. I don't deny for a second that there were people not part of the Proud Boys who were either inciting or participating in violence. But this report is totally bogus based, based on no evidence, and it's directly contrary to the reports from NYPD. And to be clear, I don't defend Antifa ever. I've never defended Antifa on this program. It, it appears that some Antifa members were arrested but were released without charges because it didn't seem that they actually did anything warranting the arrest, so they were let go. What we know will be taking place here is a hate crime investigation into the Proud Boys. And again, I know I use this term a lot, especially in the lead up to the midterms. This is what we are fighting. This is a literal mob that was running around New York, hopped up on the rantings of Gavin McInnes, beating people up. We have to vote in November and we have to vote in a way that is going to move us away from this stuff being normalized rather than towards it. Today's program is sponsored in part by Tidal, which is a different kind of music streaming app that fosters the relationship between artists and fans and values diversity in music. They offer unlimited music and video completely ad free. You can play your favorite classics. You can discover new artists and most importantly, don't miss their upcoming benefit concert on October 23rd. This is their fourth annual benefit concert Tidal X Brooklyn. It supports criminal justice reform. If you watch this show, you may have heard me mention that in our criminal justice system, more than 65% of prisoners serving life without parole for nonviolent offenses are African American. One in 15 African American males is incarcerated compared to just one in 106 white men, which means that one in three African American males can expect to go to prison in their lifetime. All of the net proceeds from Title X Brooklyn help to support charity organizations that want to reform this problem, including the Equal Justice Initiative, the Innocence Project, Cut 50, and the concert is going to feature performances from Lil Wayne, Lauren Hill, love Lauren Hill, Meek Mill, Anderson Pack, and more. There will be a free live stream of the entire show on October 23rd. Find out more, donate, and tune in at title.com slash Brooklyn. That's T-I-D-A-L dot com forward slash Brooklyn.